from his people. Can a shout of joy go forth from the people of God? The Lord will worship you. Lord, we exalt you. You are the great and the mighty one. There is no one like you. You made the heavens and the earth by the words of your mouth. Oh, the heavens, even the highest heavens is yours. And the fullness of the earth is yours as well. You rule in all the earth. You are the king of kings, the lord of lords, the mighty man in battle, the one who reigns and nobody can challenge you. Oh, shalabalada, shatalada, Lord, I pray praises go to you. You are worthy of our praise. Thank you for the scripture said. We can now enter boldly into the throne of grace. We can now enter boldly because mercy has been obtained for us. We can now enter boldly because a price has been paid. Because our high priest sits in heaven and he intercedes for us. His blood has made a way. Oh Lord, we thank you. I enter the holies of holies. I enter through the blood of the Lamb. Can you approach? Can you approach? He's calling this morning. I enter to worship you only. Hey,
omnipotent one. Omnipotent one, I worship you. I worship your majesty. Your majesty is forever. You are glorious, glorious, wonderful King. into this new month, Lord. We glorify your name, Jesus. We exalt you for you are God all by yourself. 
Zimonate, Capiatos, Yabilatos, Yagapa, Zuberatos, Yagapaila, Tuns Yadaba, O Sevena Comdagabas, Yagaparia TV. Oh Lord, we give you glory, we exalt you, Jesus. We thank you for bringing us into this new month, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Are there excited souls in the house this morning? <laughs> I want to hear excited soul as in praise the name of the living God. You know. You know, one thing we cannot do is to measure God's wonders. As in he included us into this new month's plan, and that is why we are here today. As in we are in his plan and he's committed to us. So, as I'm going to be taking um, awesome, we we'll have awesome testimonies in the house, and we'll do well to see it as we welcome them. You're welcome to church this morning. Okay, so as you hear your name, please run to the mic stand. It will be close me. Then, I go blows them. Keep clapping till they get to the mic. So straight to the point, what has God done for you? Good morning, Dad. Good morning, Mom. Good morning, church. I want to thank God for fulfilling his words towards us, towards me and my family. And most especially, there is this my friend that got married last year. This is just one year of our marriage. But within this one year, there have been so much from PCOS to ectopic pregnancy to losing her tubes and then so many things and the doctors were saying the tubes were damaged, they removed it, so many things that I can't even tell. But I was with her in faith praying and then on Wednesday when Pastor, Pastor Ray was praying, he said there is an atmosphere of babies and I don't know, something like that and he said we should exactly. say congratulations to people. I just picked my phone in faith and said congratulations to her. She didn't say anything to me. I didn't, say, I didn't even go explain anything. On Friday this week, she called me and said I should guess what. I said I don't know because it's been long. I just left it. She said she's two weeks. Exactly from 18th to Friday. Praise two the weeks, Lord. Two weeks. Two weeks. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, so, I don't know how many of us remember when that word came. See it coming at all. I didn't see it coming. I just sent congratulations to her, and it was just two weeks. I just want to appreciate this God who has Father. done it for us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. I don't know how many of us was aware that when that word came on Wednesday, and he said we should call someone that is expectant, and that's exactly what she did. And then, as in that, immediately she, that instruction came and she followed. That is how she got that result. Hallelujah. Good morning, Dad and Mom. Good morning, Church. I want to thank God for the month of August. Last month, it was a wonderful month. August was, is my birth month, the birth month of my mom also, and also the birth month of our mom. I want to thank God for every single word of prophecy that came forth for the month of August, the pleasant surprises. August came with a lot of pleasant surprises, even the ones that seemed not to be pleasant, but we are pleasant. I want to thank God for the month of August. I received my August visitor. I want to thank God for every single word that has come forth, really. If you are missing Friday prayer service or you are still trivializing any service because it's not Sunday service in both, you are missing out a lot. I want to thank God for Friday prayer service. I received my perfect healing. I received my perfect healing. Whatever the devil was planning for me came with maybe I, malaria symptoms and the rest of it. But that said, there's somebody here, the glory of the Lord is going to come upon you. Sickness cannot stand it. I said, Amen. I received my healing. After this, I met him say, I received my and I am healed. Yes, the devil came to try on Saturday. He looked as if it, it intensified and the rest of it. But I want to thank God for brethren. I want to thank God for brethren. I want to thank God for Pastor Nature. God bless you, Ma. No, so happy. I want to thank God for every single person that was there. I am healed and I'm perfectly healed. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, today is another awesome Sunday. It's communion, healing, and prophetic service. And it's an open check as in to harvest testimonies like this. And please, if you know anybody that will be needing any help at all, as in we are before Shimira Tata this morning, 
and anything is possible before God. So please be expectant. Come over our heads as we thank God for this morning's um, testimony. Father, we thank you. Thank you for these awesome testimonies. And we pray that they remain permanent in these lives in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. going back to the cross we're going back to the place where everything was done for us the place of connectivity
in the dress so that the gold smith can see himself when he looks at me. Lead, lead me, lead me to the cross, lead me to the cross. Lead me to the cross, lead me to the cross, lead me to the cross, where it all began. Lead me to the cross, lead me to Jesus, lead me to Jesus, lead me to Jesus, lead me to the cross, lead me to the cross, lead me to the cross. offer yourself this morning to God. Just tell him, Lord, lead me to the cross. Just lead me. Just lead me. Take me. If you're here on Friday, our pastor was teaching us on consecration. Come on, just in the next few minutes, in the next few minutes, just ask the Lord. Paul was writing to his son Timothy in the second letter chapter 2 from verse 20 he said in a great man's house there are many vessels but it came to a point he said of all the vessels it is the one that pauses himself that will be fit for the master's use our pastor told us on friday it is irrespective of the material makeup it depends on how polished the vessel is come on just tell the lord Baratesh kabari ena monde bakati etembeli ato de belakodas. If you don't know how to pray the prayer, just pray in the Holy Ghost. Jada bali atadas. Eshega dos kabari eka tonde belagadi ena belato de belakota na mani ena mani maadas. Rate kapayate de ke ya de de belatadas. Rados kabari ena konta na mani ena belakota na mani ena adas. Isha gade kabariyate da belakato das. Rane kabayato tapeli ana mene mo da belato da balada ba da bariyade. Isha gados kabariyate da belakatiyate. Isha gade kabariyate da belakato da belakato da belakato da belakato da belakato da belakato da
Kabari atone da bela koto da bela god. Rande de kayate de kayate das. Barande kayade kabayate das. Asa. Asa kayata barate kabayate das. Oh, we plead the blood of Jesus. Kabari atone da bela kai. It is because of the blood we have boldness to come before the throne room of God. Ah, oh, can we just in the same light just begin to ask the Lord to lead our country to the cross? We are here to pray for Nigeria. It should lead our country to the cross. Don't forget the country is made up of the people. It is not just the, the, the land. It is the people that make up the country. Can you just tell the Lord we bring the entire country under the blood of Jesus? Oh, Shina Mahans, if you have your PVC, you may need to lift it up right now. Begin to ask the Lord, we bring Nigeria, we bring Nigeria under the leadership of Christ. We bring the country under the blood. We wash through by the blood. Oh, Shada Balata, Taperia, Tabalati, Yadakai. Regedo, Zebratos, Kabaliata. Eshegedo, Zibarate, Kabayata, Tesh. Ishana mos kabarieke tonde beleke tana mani na mena modas. Ashana bas kabai, barates kabali tonde belekai. The elections we bring by the blood, we bring before the blood. Lead us to the cross. Kaya te te kaya daba. Lead the conscience of men to the cross. Kabe shegedos kibali na monde belekai. Can you raise a cry to God for our country? Kaya da baladi ya nakai. Esegados. Ishana mos kabayata. In Psalm chapter five and verse ten, Scripture said, "He said, Oh God, declare them guilty. Let them be caught in their own trap." Drive them away because of their many sins, for they have rebelled against you. Begin to tell the Lord, declare the people who feel the country is theirs, declare them guilty and rest on them your judgment by the blood. In NLT, he said, declare them guilty. Declare them guilty. Kabaratesh kabalatai. As shadows kabarieto on the belikeda. Let them be caught in their own trap. Everyone who is plotting, who is planning about our country, let them be caught in their own trap. Drive them away because of their many sins. For they have rebelled against only you. Oh, shada baladi the belikai. Oh, Zinamo, Teperi, and Abela Kota, and Abadi, and Abela Tai. The advancement of the people is the advancement of his kingdom. The purity of the church is the purity of the land. Can you begin to, to plead the blood upon the church? Begin to ask the Lord, using Potter's will as a point of contact to reach out to every church. Let the blood of Jesus, Lord, lead us to the cross. Lead us to the cross. We are thou and died that we will be born with passion and compassion for your will. Ishadabash Kabala Riada Rekadon Zebreketen de Belacadas Rados Kabariakaton de Belacateta
There's a song um, I learned in Oko on Thursday, on Friday morning. I I I know you know it because I know you are very versatile. We worship you. Actually, when they sang that song, you know, tears came to my eyes. It was later on I discovered it was the same person who did um, accept this living sacrifice. You know the song? We worship you. It's a simple song. We worship you. Okay, maybe I'm not getting it. Well, give it to us. Give it to us. Give it to us. Okay. Everybody lift your voice. Let's give him glory. Everybody lift your voice. We worship you. 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 Sing it again, everybody. Lift your voice. Let's declare it. We worship you. of who we are in Christ Jesus and let us live in that consciousness and manifest that nature that we have obtained by receiving your son as our Lord and Savior that dominion you restored to us in Christ Jesus Lord this morning let us exercise it by the reason of the communion let these things be awakened again Speak to us, Lord. Holy Spirit, brood over this assembly. Incubate the will of the Father in every man's heart. Let light shine out of darkness. Glorify the Son. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Good morning. Please, can you walk up to one, two, three persons, tell them, welcome to Ember Moons. This is a tripartite meeting. I also welcome everybody joining us online. God is said to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think. And he does it according to the power that works within us. The power is already there. So that is how he now does it. It's like you know, using the remote to control the TV, the IC is already there. Right? It's there. 
So that is why he can walk. So God can do that because there's power resident in us and he put it there as salvation. You may be seated. This meeting um, is tripartite, like I said earlier. Is experience and is a prophetic meeting. Today we are going to orchestrate and frame our ember months. You know, these months called ember months, like Ibu, ember, anything you touch, bam, 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 everything you want to buy something, but the prices are so high. And you know, ember months prices are different from other months. Uh -huh. So, there are certain things we are going to orchestrate. God framed the worlds by his word. We need to do ours by the same means. So he has shown us the pattern, how he obtains his results, and we follow suit. He lived as our example. Okay, so today is the first Sunday in September. And while praying from 31st August to September, the Lord said to me that this is the month of special remembrance. There are two dimensions of this remembrance. Number one, God can remember somebody to intervene in the person's life. And God remembered Hannah and opened her womb and she conceived. There's somebody God is remembering this month and God will open the person's mind to conceive divine ideas. The person has been aborting for a while. God sows a divine idea. The person miscarries. But this month, God said to tell you, no more miscarriage. It has ended. You won't abort again. Divine ideas are coming your way. You carry it to them and bet it. In the name of Jesus. You know, God remembered Sarah and gave her a son. And the name of that son was Isaac, which means laughter. There's somebody God is going to remember this month of September. And what you will produce by the instrumentality of the hand of God upon your life this month will bring laughter to you. You will laugh. You might have cried before, shed tears, wet your pillow at night. But this month, God said, you're going to produce something that will make you laugh. Now he did not say that will make you smile. He said that will make you laugh. You know, smile is smiled. Laughter. The second type of remembrance he's going to do is that he's going to remember someone and intervene in another person's life. God, when he was destroyed, Gomorrah, remembered Abraham and delivered Lot. When God in captivity in Egypt, the Bible said, and God remembered his covenant with the fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and then he delivered Israel. There's somebody here. Your family business is going down. I was praying, I got that specifically. Your family business is going down. The Lord said, He's going to cause that family business to rise again because of you. He will remember you and intervene in that business. There's somebody whose career is shaking. Is shaking. You, are in, you have just been plunged into turbulent waters. God said to tell you that he's going to remember your career or rather intervene in your career by remembering you. There's a family in crisis. But there's somebody in that family that is serving God faithfully. God said that this month, he's going to remember that family. He's going to intervene in that family, remembering his faithful servant. You know, prophecies don't just happen. I may not specifically have called your case, but your case still applies. It doesn't mean that God did not remember your issue or situation. No. He's omni, omniscient, all-knowing. He knows everything. We know in part. He knows in full. So the one I've mentioned is the part that I know that was revealed to me. The other ones, he knows them. 
and he will also do them. Prophecies don't fulfill themselves. We have heard it several times. There are two parts. When God speaks, I hold on to it and war a good warfare. So prophecies are caused to happen. They don't happen by wishful thinking. I hear a prophecy, I go and lie down and I'm sleeping, waiting that one day I open my eyes, the prophecy has happened. No. Even the birth of Jesus did not happen by default. There were men who prayed it into existence. There were the Simeons, there were the Annas that prayed it into existence. So many times we begin to um, doubt certain prophetic words, the authenticity thereof, not necessarily because they are wrong, but because our attitude towards them is not the right attitude. When God speaks, he doesn't go to bed. He watches over his word to perform it. But the performance when it comes to the earth, God doesn't budge into the earth. We have said it before. He has given the earth to the children of men. So anything he must do on earth must be in partnership with man. If there is no man, God is handicapped. Even if he said it, it won't come to pass. Except there is a cooperation of man. And that is where prayer is critical, very important. Prayer actually is partnering with God to execute his purposes on earth. That's what prayer is. So if I don't do that partnership, it won't come to pass. God might have spoken over my family. He needs somebody there to receive that word and begin to war with it so that it will come to pass. Before God steps into a situation, a portal must open for him. You know, was that word, that, that thing Jesus was talking about in John chapter 10? He said, talk, called himself the good shepherd. He said, the potter hears his voice and opens for him. So there has to be a potter that will open the door. If the door is not opened, he doesn't come in. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, he said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone opens, so he doesn't just kick down the door and enter. No, he's too gentle for that. If anyone opens, then I will enter. I will eat with him and he with me. So, now we've heard his voice. What do we do? Are we going to open? Are we going to keep him out or bring him in? The ball is now in our court. Revelation chapter 1 verse 6. I want to, actually verses 5 and 6. What I want to do today by the instruction of God is to awaken something in everybody. There's something I am here by the Holy Spirit to awaken. And I'm believing God that is going to help me do that, execute that assignment with precision and accuracy. Please everybody follow me closely. Follow me closely. I'm from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Look at the next verse. And had made us kings and priests unto God and his father to him be glory and dominion forever and ever amen so the primary thing one of the primary things that redemption does is to enroll us into the school of priesthood anybody who is saved is a priest by reason of redemption. The person is a priest. Redemption produces priests. It is a kingdom of priests. That is the type of priest that redemption produces. They are priests with royalty. 
that's what the Bible calls in um, Revelation chapter 5, verses 9 and 10. I think we should look at it so that we tie the two, the two up. And they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seas thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred. So kindred limitations no longer have effect on the redeemed. Out of every tongue, tongue limitation. That's why once somebody is saved, the next thing is an empowerment that gives the person a coded or high programming language called tongues. That's the proof that somebody is full of the Holy Ghost. It's one of the proofs. Signs. If God created all the languages on earth, why are we thinking that he shouldn't have his own personal language? So, things that limit languages no longer limit the redeemed. We are out of that limit. And people and nation, so you see the corruption in so many nations. So, the people of God should be a separate people from what is going on. They should not behave like the commoners, the common people. No. We have been called out, separated from that. That thing no longer has effect on us. Or let me put it this way. That thing should not have effect on us anymore. On the other divide, families are crashing. On this divide, they are healing. On that divide, things are collapsing. Economies are collapsing all over the place. On this divide, the economy is not of this world. Our citizenship is not of this world. If only in this world we have hope, we are of all men most miserable. So we have a citizenship that is not of this world, it's of heaven. And that is how our economy, that's where our economy comes from. Therefore, if men now say there's a casting down, people of a different economy say there's a lifting up. Because it's a different economy. We've been redeemed from all this well, inflation or whatever. And then after that, verse 10. And has made us unto our God kings and priests. And the reason he made us kings and priests is so that we reign where? Who is a priest? For instance, if you go to a simpler version, I mean, uh, maybe something like NIV, he said kingdom of priests. I think that's how he puts it. Yes. To be a kingdom and priest. So, okay, I think NIV talked about kingdom of priests. <laughs> Become a kingdom of priests. Okay, NLT for our God. Okay. Who is a priest? A priest is one who officiates at an altar. We know that. Yes. So every priest should have a, she makes contact with the deity that ordained him a priest. So redemption is not just bringing us out of Egypt, out of the world. Redemption is also ordination. Redemption ordains everybody who is redeemed as a priest. Redemption is coronation. He crowns everybody who is redeemed as a king. So you now combine kingship and priesthood. You get what is called a kingdom of priests. So every priest must have an altar because a priest does not call himself. There's a higher power that calls him and ordains him. So that higher power, he must be in constant relationship or constant connection or communion with that higher power. If he breaks it, he loses his position. So you see, that image that we now regain in Christ that Adam lost, we regain it in Christ. That image is renewed in knowledge after the knowledge of him who created him. Colossians chapter 3 verse 10. That is how we renew that image. So we must be in constant touch and communion with the one who gave the image in the first place. 
so that through our knowledge of him progressive knowledge of him we can progressively renew the image if the image because these are prerequisites for dominion so there has to be an altar everybody who is born again should have a prayer place that's the implication a prayer place there should be a the place where the person prays where the person offers incense and connects to God there has to be a place there has to if there is no such constant communion with God very soon the person will start losing touch of the essentials of his nature and so things begin to happen to the person by chance because it starts living at the mercy of F-A-T-E, faith. But that's not how the redeemed should live. Okay. That word, to reign, because that's one of the primary assignments for priests, to reign. To reign means to have sovereign power. Hey. Another definition of that word to reign is to have superior dominion. Let me tell you how this thing works. If you remember, like in some of our traditional places, there's um, some people still hold this masquerade thing, masquerade. They still do masquerade during festive periods. Is that correct? Okay. I was initiated into the cult, you know. I think I've told my story. So, in those days, after the initial, we were small now, so we can't start following big, big masculine. We start with small ones. And many times, it's these small ones that look for petty troubles. Petty troubles. So, they come into the place. They are pursuing especially ladies or girls. Actually, sometimes they don't even near ladies. You know, they see a lady. They respect them. So, you know this um, piam, piam, mo. You know it is called um, piam, piam, mo, those small, small ones. That's boy masquerade. <laughs> the masquerade that's still wearing diaper. So, you know, there is just their fellow girls, small, small girls, that they were chasing inside the cassava farm. Fafu nenwai, fachanuzo. Fafu, some of these mature people, they're clear. So, that one will be doing, and those small, small ones make the loudest noise. Making noise up and down. But, after some time, one big one shows up. The moment, you know, there's a way we hear that Nukumonabia. When we hear it, we start looking for safety. Because that one has what is called superior dominion and can overrule our own dominion. So that one self, if he's kind-hearted, can bring out all the people we change, bring them out in front of us to shame us, to show us that he has superior dominion. It's the same thing with the position we occupy in Christ Jesus. He has made us kings and priests, so we reign. We exercise superior dominion so where sickness has held sway where disease has held sway where some things of this world some things that plague people have held people down and bound okay more better we steps in he overrules the dominion of the other one and releases people from their bondage in Acts chapter 8, let me show you something. Acts chapter 8 from verse 4. I want to show you a practical example in the scripture of this type of thing. Practical example. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad after the, you know, Stephen was martyred, went everywhere preaching the word. Look at the next verse. Then, there's somebody watching me. You are sick. Before the end of this message 
you will be healed because you will awaken to the awareness of your superior dominion that yoke will break from your neck Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. Look at the next verse. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip, Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Yes. For unclean crying out with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them. And many taken with pulses and that were lame were healed. And there was great joy in that city because one priest entered. But see, the next verse. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out him that himself was some great one. Emma, there's one man, I think he's late now. Is it uh, the, so, uh, the Fanta or something? You know, okay, is it Coke? Okay. You know, sometimes you don't know which drink it is again. <laughs> he sang a song. Obelemon, na wewu, oki ijele no no so. Eh? Ijele apota, there's an ijele that's about to be awakened in you today. Actually, that's why I'm here. Okay. So, he presented himself that he was some great one. Look at the next verse. To whom they all gave heed. So, everybody submitted to him. From the least to the greatest saying, this man is the great power of God. You see, when superior dominion has not shown up, inferior one holds sway. Cancer is still there because there's no superior dominion. Leukemia is still there because there's no superior dominion. Henia is still there because there's no superior dominion. That family crisis is still there because there's no superior dominion. I was discussing with certain people last week in the office and somebody was telling me how somebody stood somewhere beat his hand on the table and utter something against his family and said that nobody from this family, this particular one, all the people in their lineage will never build a house and roof it. Anybody that starts, stops. They start, they stop. You know, so it was now his turn to build. He started and stopped. He didn't roof it. So certain priests now showed up. And then they began to pray and overruled. Because the verdict from that man will be broken if somebody in that family roofs the house. So priests came in and began to pray and overruled what the other person has said. And guess what? This man roofed his house. Actually, he has moved in. There are things he will overrule today. Oh, Gashadebasi. Okay. Now, this, is, this was what they did to Simon. Look at the next verse. And to him they had regard. Because that of long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. Long time. So there are predicaments that have lasted for a long time. They have become chronic. Chronic predicaments. Look at the next verse. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Look at the next verse. Then Simon himself lived also. The one that presented himself as a great power submitted to a greater power. Okay, 
what are the functions of priests? I want to tell us about priests and what they do. Just very quickly so that we get into because we'll get into a practical session. In no mean order, I just want to itemize just few of them. It's not uh, limited to this, but these are just for the sake of our discussion this morning. I'll just pick out these few ones. In 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9, 1 Peter 2 verse 9, the Bible says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should shew forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So one of the functions of the priest, particularly in New Testament time, is to show forth the praises of God. What's the implication of that? Everything that I do should bring praise to God. My words, my thoughts, my actions, my lifestyle. Ask myself, what I am presently doing, is it bringing praise to God? Because that is one of my responsibilities as a New Testament priest. How I live, is it causing God to be praised? Is it giving credit to God? It is a question every New Testament priest must be asking. Even when you go behind closed doors, you must ask yourself that question because that I close my door doesn't mean I close the all-seeing eyes. He is still watching. He is not watching. He is actually watching to protect. He is watching to bless. So I must also do my part because I wasn't just called a priest to just for the fun of it. No. There's a function to perform. So I must do everything to bring him glory. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 1. Are you following what I'm saying? Hebrews 5 verse 1. For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to God that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. Now this is talking about the Old Testament but he brought it into the New Testament to look at certain things. So one of the functions of priests is to offer sacrifices and gifts. In the New Testament, unlike the Old, we don't bring animal sacrifices, kill animals like, you know, in the Old Testament, uh, during their worship services, unquote. If you come to this type of place, you see animals. Then you see blood everywhere. Killing because there were so many sacrifices. Do you know that in the Old Testament, as a lady, after seeing your period, that's once you start seeing your period, you're unclean. Anything you touch is unclean. Anything that touches you is unclean. You sit on something is unclean. You lean on something is unclean. Then after your days of what uncleanness are past, and you are now clean again, you bring sacrifice. Yes. somebody lift your hands thank God for redemption thank him because I know some of you probably might be on your period and you are here you have defied the congregation of God's people <laughs> are you getting what I'm saying okay so what is the sacrifice we now offer one of them is the sacrifice of our body God wants to meet humanity using human vessels so if I give him my body as a tool to use he can through my body touch my family he can through my body touch my spouse my children he can through my mouth speak to my children he can through my hands touch my wife he can through my mouth speak to my wife he can through my mouth speak to my colleagues in the office through my lifestyle impact the people around me if I give him my body, he uses it as his tool to reach humanity. Where the body is not offered, God doesn't have something to work with. 
So this is one sacrifice I offer to God as a New Testament priest. My body. So, you know, when we talk about offering the body, we are now looking at me being particular about what enters it. You know, during El Call, Dr. Favor told us about principles of healthy living. That the body does not forget. I won't forget that statement. So what I put into the body, I put it inside, and I think, well, um, my youthful age, energy is everywhere, and you know, when I was in seven or bottling company for my youth service, on the average, I pray you won't shout, you know, seven up now, there was seven up, there was Pepsi, there was uh, Miranda, everything, and then um, you can go to the bottling line, you know, the drinks usually sweat while they are being bottled. If you understand what I mean. Yes, they are very cold. So, and they are attractive when they sweat. You know, some people are not attractive when they sweat. But this type attracts you when he's sweating. That is where the temptation comes. So, in those days, I used to drink on the average seven bottles every day. Actually, there was one philosophy somebody sold to us that, you know, backed me up. He told us that, that it, it, doesn't, it doesn't do anything. Once you take one bottle and then drink water, it will dilute everything. <laughs> philosophy. <laughs> so I was taking bottle, seven bottles. So if I take one, I bring water and drink to dilute it. <laughs> But it doesn't work like that. Just like Dr. Favor said, the body does not forget. It now gets to a time, the person now says, okay, I'm stopping it now. I'm stopping it. I'm 40. You know, from 40, anything can happen. I'm stopping all this nonsense, all this smoking, all this snuff, utaba. I'm stopping it now. But the point is that the body did not forget. The person journeys to 70 suddenly. The body reminds the person of those things the person did in his youth. Say, you did this. I didn't forget. I kept records. And now, these things are manifesting. Sometimes it's lung cancer. Sometimes it's diabetes. Sometimes it's something. Just, you're wondering, where did it come from? You go to the doctor and say, I don't know. Do you smoke? I don't smoke. Oh. You know what Dr. Fimo said? That even if you say you don't smoke at that time, they will now ask you, did you ever, oh, did you ever smoke sometime? You say, well, well, actually. <laughs> so, the body now reminds you that there were some things you did that he documented. And now you are going to read his notes. So offering my body, I am careful what enters into my body. I am careful what comes upon my body. And I'm careful what I use my body to do. Because my body is now purchased. I am purchased with a price. I belong to God. So I give him my body to use. And you know, some people say, ah, how can you, these people are using me. God is one kind of user. You know, once there are some apps you want to enter, you say username. God is one type of user that after he has finished using you, the end point is glory. That is, you will be much more better than you used to be. It's not like people who use you, drain you, some organizations or whatever, and put you into their trash can. You are forgotten. Sap you of everything that you have. God fills you with everything you never had. Good things. So your life is much better after he has used you. Please, can somebody decide today to be used of God? 
so I offer my body. Malachi chapter 2 from verse 4. Malachi 2 verse 4. And ye shall know that I have sent this commandment unto you, that my covenant might be with Levi, saith the Lord of hosts. Levi was the tribe that God Almighty chose from all the tribes of Israel. To, he gave them the privilege of standing in his council to hear words from him and bring it to the people. Is this tribe of Levi. He didn't give it to others, but he gave it to Levi. And then, you know, as a result of a change of priesthood, he came to Judah too. That's why a high priest after Melchizedek came from Judah. But you see, every priest is given the privilege to stand in God's council. So he now started talking about Levi in the Old Testament that had that privilege. And he said this in the next verse. Look at it. My covenant was with him of life and peace. And I gave them to him for the fear wherewith he feared me and was afraid before my name. Look at the next verse. The law of truth was in his mouth and iniquity was not found in his lips. He walked with me in peace and equity and did turn many from iniquity. So one of the responsibilities of the priest is soul winning. Turning people from iniquity is my responsibility as a priest to preach the gospel it is my responsibility look at the next verse for the priest's lips should keep knowledge and they should seek the law at his mouth why for he is the messenger of the lord of hosts so god almighty doesn't use ignorant priests every priest should be very knowledgeable that's the reason in the consecration of Aaron the high priest and his sons the other priests the first thing that God asked Moses to do was to wash them in water in Leviticus chapter 6 8 wash them in water that water signifies the word every priest must be knowledgeable in the law of God and also knowledgeable in the communication of that law in contemporary language so the person has the Bible on one hand and other books including the newspaper on the other hand. An ignorant priest doesn't get God's attention. He said in Hebrew, I mean Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 My people are ruined for lack of knowledge. He didn't end there. Many of us end there. But that's not where the verse ended said because thou has rejected knowledge now see the word he used rejected everybody say rejected the that word rejected denotes that knowledge is available just that i made a choice not in favor of it so probably i had options one of them was to get knowledge but i decided in disfavor of knowledge so I saw a book that will help my spirit and I saw an RC Coke that will feed my body. Then that option is placed before me. And then I now go for the RC Coke and take it and reject the book. God said, if this happens, I will reject you. That thou shalt be no priest Priests are knowledgeable people. As a husband, a father in a home, you got to know the law of God and teach it to your home. If you don't do that, you stand the chances of being rejected by the one who called. God sacks people from priesthood. Even as a mother, because both of you are parents. The man and his, the wife. You are both parents. You are both priests over your home. You know, just the way in a plane, you have the main pilot and co-pilot. Both of them are pilots. If one is taken out, the other one can run the plane. So the family where you have mother, father and children is like an aircraft with two engines. If one engine packs up, the other engine flies the aircraft. 
That is why in a family, both man and his wife must know the law of God. Why? God seeks godly children. You can't raise godly children if you are not a godly man or woman. Get to know God personally. Get a place where you pray. Get a time where you study his word to know it. As a priest, you've got to know the law of God so you don't mess up and violate it. So, and amazingly, ignorance is inheritable. Because some of us inherited the ignorance of our parents. Actually, their ignorance was their knowledge because of their level of exposure at that time. But now, their knowledge is ignorance in our days. So we inherited it. And some of us are not doing anything to change it. We are perpetuating the ignorance of our fathers. They didn't have, they were not exposed to the things we are now exposed to. Right now, everybody in Christ, please, make out this discipline. Sit down and study. Not just God's word. Get books. Get books. In the next five, ten years, you will not change except for two critical things. The books you read and the people you meet. Otherwise, remember we have said it a couple of times. Time alone doesn't mature people. Time ages. Growing old is just allowing time to pass over me. There is actually no award for ignorance. There is no reward for that. So he said, you are not going to be priest to me. Seeing that you have forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. You know why he included the children here? Because if the father doesn't know the law of God, he will not teach it to his children. So his children will also be anti-God. He that turns a deaf ear towards the law, even his prayer is an abomination to God. The point is this. When I offer prayers to God, I must offer it disciplined by his word. If I am not quoting his word to him, no matter how emotional I become, he kicks me out of his court. He may allow me to finish crying or rolling on the floor. Okay. Get up and quote my law. You've got to do something. If you don't do anything, I ain't going to do nothing. That's American English. Are you following? Please, from this ember moons, make it a custom. Get a place. Pray. Now, I'm not just talking about fathers and mothers. I'm talking about everybody who is a priest who has been redeemed. A place of prayer, an altar. A priest is useless without an altar. Absolutely. A place of study. Intimacy with God. Then, develop the desire to communicate what you have cultivated. That's what stood Ezra out from others. In Ezra chapter 7 verse 10, the Bible says Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of God and to do it and to teach in Israel his statutes. So to seek, read it, study it, then put it into practice before communicating it. Do not communicate what you have not practiced. The authenticity of my message lies in the practical experience I have got from it. You know the difference between somebody who is just talking theory and somebody who is talking from practical experience. Theory is not enough to bring transformation. Practical experience, very important. Okay. Leviticus chapter 10, verses 8 to 11. Let me say this one. These are the functions of the priest. I'm looking at them itemizing them. And the Lord spake unto Aaron, saying, Do not drink wine, nor strong drink. I'm 
looking at some people. Some people are looking at me too. Yeah, be looking at me. I'm looking at you. <laughs> eh? He didn't. He didn't say. Uh, it's a command. Don't do this. Thou, nor thy sons with thee. So it's not just you. You a man. You a married man, and you are redeemed. You have received Jesus as Lord and Savior. He said, "Don't take things that intoxicate. Let your children." not also take it be separate you are separated sanctified by the person of Christ you are sanctified stop asking show me in the Bible is drinking wine good or is wrong and how about Timothy Paul said he should drink small wine are you Timothy do you have stomach problem have you done what Timothy did do you know Timothy became a bishop in his youth? And hold Ephesus sway that after his bishopric assignment, 600 years later, there was no trace of Islam in Asia Minor. 600. The impact of his bishopric assignment in Asia kept Islam away for 600 years. You, you have not even captured one, one lodge. You are talking about wine, wine, wine. You can't drink now. Your landlord will come one day and kick you out. <laughs> no, that life is not the way it is in your head. According to Pastor TJ, it's not me that said it is Pastor TJ. So if you want to know it's Pastor TJ, he can give you more explanation on that. Okay, so don't drink wine, don't drink strong drink. Thou nor thy sons with thee. When you go into the tabernacle of the congregation, you say, uh -huh. it's because, you know, you don't drink it when you enter. When you now come out now, you can drink it. You know, in the New Testament, you are always there. That's the problem. So, you see, <laughs> In your house, you are there. You can offer that thing in your house. In the bus, you are there. You, you don't step out of it. You perpetually live in it. He said, don't do that. Lest he die. That is as far as God is concerned, you have ceased to exist. You know, there's a man like that. Actually, there were two people like that. I want to mention them to you. One of them was Saul the king. Yes. As far as God was concerned, he was relevant to his plan for two years. He ruled for 40 years. Two years he was with God. 38 years, an evil spirit inspired him. So after two years, God forgot him. And God started searching for another person. So as far as God was concerned, Saul had died. There's another man, this one a prophet, Isaiah. He was prophesying up and down. God advertised his position in the spirit. As he was prophesying on earth, God was looking for a man to prophesy for him. So as far as God was concerned, Isaiah does not exist. It won't be your story. So he said, it shall be a statute forever throughout your generations. Look at the next verse. And that ye may put a difference between holy and unholy. And between unclean and clean. So one of the functions of the priest is to differentiate between what is holy and what is not. Right now we have tried bringing in a lot of adulteration into the priesthood. Now we're discussing it, I think it was on Friday. People now bringing comedians, pastors, priests. Bringing comedians to stand on the altar and make mockery of the Holy Ghost. Make mockery of Holy Ghost fire. Make mockery of tithe. Make mockery of prayer. Make mockery of fellowship. Make mockery of pastors. Make mockery of believers. And guess what? Priests are there clapping and laughing. The people that are supposed to be putting that distinction, they are now swayed. And then to explain it away, they say it's variety. That variety is the spice of life. With many of our varieties, we have enthroned the abomination that causes desolation. And then we are making God's house desolate. 
we may have plenty people in church that doesn't mean they are all in heaven people can come to your church oh, that doesn't mean they are registered in heaven they could be registered on your church register but in the book of life their names are absent so this is the function if a father or whatever make a clear this you are born again don't joke with things like I have heard some people you know joking with things that um, among unbelievers holy things that you shouldn't tell that prayer is not everything in the quietness of prayer 